Hello Infiniteers and welcome to a special bonus episode of Toy Box Tutorials. Today I want to show you how to build the little tower defense map that I showed you yesterday. You'll need this if you want to follow along with my economy system tutorials and build this toy box for yourself. And again I recommend doing that with all of the toy boxes in this series because the best way to learn is to do it yourself. At the same time, while I'm building this toy box, I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks for designing your own tower defense maps. Um, I am an indie game developer, after all, or a former one anyway. <laughs> and even though I never created my own tower defense game, I have designed maps for various kinds of games, and I understand how tower defense games work. So you could benefit from my knowledge and experience by watching this video, even if you're not planning to build this particular tower defense map. Now the first thing we're going to do is set up our sky, and the sky I'm using is under the Disney Infinity 2.0 folder here. It's the Scottish Highlands. I'll set that to be my sky. And at that point we can delete the sky changer because we don't need that anymore. And we're not going to keep this starting block, but just so you can see the orientation of the sky, we're going to be building in that direction, okay? For our terrain, I'm going to set the theme on this to use the World of the Wisps. I'll set that to be my theme, and I will also theme all, because you can see I've placed a few toys there ahead of time, so I don't have to scroll through all the drawers. Oops, I meant to theme all. All of the terrain we're going to put down is going to use this theme. And let me just show you really quickly the toys we're going to need. So this is a little further down in the terrain drawer. It's the small floating cliff. And right next to it, or a couple away from it, we have this one. It's the wide floating cliff. If you keep scrolling right from there, you don't have to go too far and you find this cliff ledge. We're going to be using that, as well as this small bridge cliff and this floating bridge hill. Um, there's another piece down here that works stylistically with these pieces. Uh, don't use this. <laughs> what I have found is that the enemies will not step onto this piece of terrain for whatever reason. Um, so if you're going to be building a toy box with this piece, be aware this piece of terrain has that problem. Enemies will not step on it. So you probably don't want to use that unless you're just building an exploration toy box or a place where you know enemies aren't going to be. We also need this little rope bridge from the platforming toys. We have three treasure canisters here from out of the gameplay toys. I'll talk about those in a little bit. And then this is out of the set pieces uh, drawer. It's the Dunbrock Stone Gate. And I'll talk about that more in a little bit as well. All right, so let's pick up this piece of terrain and put it down. And the first thing I want to do is build the starting area for my toy box. And I'm going to use this piece here. I'll place this out here about like so. And notice I'm kind of placing it a little bit lower. We'll do that. We'll do another one of these kind of centered on there like that. All right, so that's what we have so far. This little piece is going to sit here in this corner, and you're probably going to be wondering what I am doing. <laughs> this is the starting location for our little town. This is where the player enters the toy box, and it's not necessarily necessary, but I built this because I had planned to do something with this area originally, and decided for purposes of keeping the tutorial simpler that I wasn't going to do that. So this is kind of an extraneous area, but um, I'm going to build it anyway because that's the toy box that I had. All right, so there are those square blocks. And then we're going to pick this piece up over here. And we're going to fit the corners in around this. So just like that, like that, 
like that. And then the last piece goes in there like so. And then we're going to use this piece over here to fill in the perimeter of that little island. Alright, so then just put this in. And I like the edging on this because it just makes it look really nice around the perimeter. It doesn't look too square or blocky. And actually, let's move this over because this piece needs to go over here. Whoops. Pick it up. <laughs> that piece needs to go there. And that piece will slide in there like that. And then we're going to use the small bridge piece. Flip it around so it's not too repetitive. And that'll be the exit from this little island. We're going to have two of them. Okay, so there's our starting place. All right, now when you're designing a tower defense map, the first rule is to keep it small. <laughs> Don't build some huge world with a lot of extraneous area. And as I mentioned, this is kind of extraneous, but I'm going to tell you in the tutorials when we get near the end what you can do with this area. So it may not actually be extraneous, but keep the world small because a large world only eats up memory. And if the enemy spawn points are too far away from the location they're trying to reach, it just forces them and the player to waste a lot of time running around, and so a small map keeps the game tightly focused and keeps the action going. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to add a couple little bridges here to the end of this, and that's going to take us to the starting area for our tower defense map. All right. And then we'll place this piece here, like so. You notice there's only the rocks on the one side there. We'll put this little bridge over here. Alright, so when you're designing your map, think about where your treasure will be and uh, where the enemy spawn points will be um, and where those enemies will come from. And so we're going to use this location here as kind of the central part of our base that we're going to be defending. So we'll place one of these here, one of these here. And you'll notice I'm creating some paths away from these locations. Okay. So this is going to be kind of the central area that we're going to be defending. And uh, what you want to do is create a set of paths between the place you're defending and the enemy spawn points. And I'm going to have one out over that way. I'm going to have one out over that way, one out over this way. And um, when I mean creating paths, I don't mean using the path creator toy. I mean creating paths kind of like what I'm doing here. Um, I'm talking about footpaths or routes for the enemies, and I think maybe routes is a better word. Um, you can provide a single route or multiple routes, but what you don't want to do is create a large open area like this and have to defend this. Because what happens is it's just mostly wasted space. Let's say we put our treasure canister here and our enemy spawn point over here. The enemies are going to make a beeline for your treasure canister. So all of this space over here would be wasted. All of this space over here would be wasted. <laughs> and so what you want to do is set up paths or routes that uh, force enemies to take certain directions and go around stuff. And you can do that like I'm doing out here with terrain and set up paths like that. Um, or another option is you can create multiple levels 
So if we are, for example, get back to this part of the drawer. And let's grab this little piece here. So you could create multiple levels, for example. And if this was the area we were going to defend on this end, what you could do is provide a certain limited number of ramps or stairs for the enemies to be able to take to get up here. Like that, for example. And so now you've just created effectively two routes for the enemies to get from this level onto this level. So that's another option you can use. Let me take these out because we're not going to keep those. Another option is to set up obstacles. Um, you can create things like uh, use fences to create barriers that the uh, enemies have to go around. And fences are good because players can see over the top of them and see the enemies coming. And the developers for Assault on Asgard and Stitches Tropical Rescue used fences a lot in those maps. But the idea is, is that you're setting up routes for the enemies that the player can then defend um, by setting up towers. And the towers in Disney Infinity are those defensive toys like you saw me use yesterday. The laser turrets, the springing umbrella, and other toys. Players purchase those from the shop and then they place them to try to cover as many of these routes as possible and uh, to try to supplement the defenses and keep the enemies from getting to the central area where they're trying to defend. And part of the fun of this kind of game is planning your defensive strategy. So the more paths, the better. And so that's what I'm doing here. So we're going to build a little path that goes off over this way. And again, these little bridge pieces work perfectly for this because they provide a nice little decorative uh, pathway. And it also makes sense that it's kind of floating over the water like that. I like that. Um, and also it doesn't take up a lot of memory. <laughs> so that's even better. All right, so we'll place another one over here. Like so. And you don't want to make these paths too long because you don't want the enemies to have to go too far. Um, that just, again, causes a lot of delay and you want to keep the map small and tightly focused. <laughs> Guess I flick first and get it over there. There we go. So now we have a little place over here for the enemies to come from. Got a place over here for the enemies to come from. We'll create another one out over this way. And we'll build ourselves another little island over here. All right, let's get back over to this part of the terrain drawer. We'll pick that piece up and put it down. We can use this piece right in here like this. And then once again, like we did with our starting area, we'll just kind of create a nice border around it. With these toys. And I'm kind of trying to give you some ideas for using these terrain pieces in this way. So that's why I'm trying to build a lot of little different looking structures here. Uh, whoops, that's not the one I wanted. 
that's actually the one I wanted. Which <laughs> is the same as that piece. So I guess I could have just picked that one up. So here we have a little bit larger area for the enemies to come from. But again, this is our area we're defending here. Um, if you're not quite sure, as you're watching me do this, <laughs> how you might design your own tower defense map, I should point out that um, what you can do is play the Assault on Asgard or Stitches Tropical Rescue from 2.0 and study those maps while you're playing it. You can use the time that you're placing traps to just kind of wander around the map and take a look at it and study it. Maybe draw it out on paper and um, you can use those as the foundation for or the starting point for your own maps. Now I'm going to take this rope bridge here and you'll notice there's a gap in those rocks on that terrain piece. And the bridge fits that perfectly. So we're going to use that. I'll pick that piece up and spin it around and we'll do the same thing over on this side. So we're going to create a little island over here that the player can also go to. This isn't going to be an enemy spawn point, but I used it as a place to put a uh, sidekick door. If you noticed in the playthrough the other day, it's where I tossed the queen <laughs> and took her to safety. And it's helpful, I found, when you're defending this area. If a townsperson happens to wander into this area, you can get them out of harm's way and collect some extra money by running over there and dumping them in the sidekick door. So that's helpful. All right, so there is our map layout. Now, first thing you want to do um, when you're designing this thing is... Uh, Think about, again, where you're going to be defending, and my area is here. And the toys that are going to lure the enemies here are these treasure canisters, and there are three of them. There's this one from Assault on Asgard. This is uh, Odin's treasure. This is the one we're going to use. The one from Stitch's Tropical Rescue is just a few down from there in the same drawer. It's this, the Duck Sanctuary. And we also have the safety dome, which is a little bit more generic, and you can use that. And we've looked at this before earlier in the Toy Box tutorial series, but you can specify a number of treasures to put inside there, or people. And um, so you can use any of these to defend with. We're going to use Odin's treasure canister for this. I just like this myself. And it seemed to fit pretty well with the theme of this world. So the first one we're going to do is put right down in the middle of this block here. And you need at least one of these toys to draw the enemies and cause them to attack your base that you're trying to defend. One is sufficient, but if you want a greater challenge, you can place one or two additional treasure canisters. And uh, I'm going to place one over here. Uh, you want to place them in separate locations. But be careful because the further apart you place these, the harder it's going to be to defend because the player can't be in multiple locations at the same time. But of course you don't want to place them too far apart because then the player wastes a lot of time running back and forth between them. So if you place a second canister, obviously placing it next to this is kind of pointless. <laughs> so you want to place it a little ways away and I chose to place my second one over here. And so there are the treasure canisters for my base. That's what's going to lure the enemies over here. Now the next thing you want to do is make it clear to the players where the possible enemy spawn points are. They need to know where the enemies will be coming from. And as I said, they're going to be coming from over here and over here and over here. Um, but we need some visual way to let the player know that's where they're coming from. And I'm going to use this set piece for that. Again, this is the Dunbrock Stone Gate. It just provides a nice visual indicator that kind of looks like a portal that the uh, enemies would be coming through. 
I'm going to place the first one there like that. I'm going to place another one over here on this island. Like so. And we'll place the third one right here. And we'll try to cover up that seam a little bit. Um, but I'm using these gates to indicate the portals that the enemies are coming through. And if you remember in the playthrough video, I also used arrows on the ground to indicate which spawn points would be used by that next wave uh, so the players could prepare. And I'll show you how to do that when we get to that point in the video. Originally in my toy box I had also planned to have a fourth gate down over on this end that would be used for the fourth wave. And I decided to take the fourth wave out of the toy box here because that was just too much. Three was enough for the tutorial, but that might be an exercise for you if you want to add a fourth wave later on. All right, um, the more spawn points there are, I should point out, the tougher it is to defend the map. Um, you don't want too many spawn points because then it's impossible to defend. My final wave yesterday, wave three, as you recall, had um, three different spawn points and that's all I was using. But I was running around a lot trying to help my towers defend these treasures. And so four or five spawn points is probably the maximum in a map. Um, six if you know you'll have two players, but that's really pushing it. Three is really sufficient to make the map quite challenging. All right, so at this point we have the basic structure of our map. And I'm going to go offline now and add all the plants and the decorations because that's going to take some time and you don't need to watch me do all of that. So let me do that and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I am back and I finished decorating this toy box. One of the advantages of a small toy box is that you have the memory available to add a lot of detail. And so I did. So let me show you what I have done here. Um, Probably the first thing to do is to start with this additional little island over here that I forgot to build. <laughs> so this is the base that we're defending and the little island connected with the rope bridge. So I basically took this corner and placed another one out here. The edge of that is kind of lined up almost with the edge of that. And you can see there's a little bit of space here. Um, this is not an island that the players are going to be able to get to, so you don't have to worry about the exact placement of this. But anyway, the corner, and then the same piece that I used here for this piece of terrain. I've got two of them on either side, and then a corner, and then two straights and a corner, two straights and a corner. And the piece in the middle is just this small flat terrain block. Okay. And then on top of that, I built the, the castle. So we have these towers. You can see this is centered right on that terrain seam there. And the terrain seam there. Right here. And right over here. And then you just connect the little wall, put a wall piece on either side of that, like you see there, and a tower and a wall piece and a tower. And it's just a little structure that uh, I like the scenery of it. And I'll explain why I added this in a moment. The plants here that are around it are just some trees. These are out of the uh, plant drawer. This is a large Dunbrock bush. That's the medium tree. That's the large tree. and the medium, the small. Again, the exact placement of these doesn't really matter. You'll notice I didn't put anything really on the back side of this too much because uh, player aren't gonna, players aren't going to see that. But that just kind of adds a nice little castle structure that I thought looked kind of neat. And again, this little island does serve a purpose, and I'll get to that in a minute. All right, for the village. So we have here the the two bridges that lead to our defending area. And right off the end of this piece here, I put the start pad, all right, facing that direction. 
And the sidewalk paths, if you look at the terrain seam right here, this terrain seam along this side runs right underneath those uh, cobblestone paths. And you find these underneath the building sets group four. They're part of the Pirates of the Caribbean set. And I just rotated these around and made a bunch of uh, little paths connect up the doorways here and then I got the uh, little path a little piece there to go into that door and some other little pieces over here small square one there and then paths here okay I put the well sidekick door in the middle. This is out of the gameplay toys drawer. It's from the Brave uh, Forest Siege game in 2.0. These are the Fantasyland stone base with the straw roof. We've got these little awning corners and awnings here. And I placed some over here as well on the back side of that house. We've got some chimneys that we've added. Large fantasy land chimneys. So you can see how I put my houses together there. It's not too difficult. Again, this is out of the uh, fantasy land. Uh, building sets group for fantasy land pieces and then we added some more of these dunbrock trees from the plants drawer i've got this piece this is one of the customizable pieces the first nine pieces in the plants drawer along with fantasy terrain, terrain corner one fantasy terrain three Kind of covering up that seam a little bit. These are decorations. Again, they're from Brave Forest Siege. I got two of them back to back. And more trees. And I also placed these little Dunbrock flowers around. These little yellow flowers. Again, those are out of the plants drawer. Just for some additional detail. You can see where I placed those. These are also those bushes from the plant drawer. So just adding some details here around the village. Okay. More bushes. <clears throat> All right. Coming over here, got more of these little flowers that I placed around the perimeter of this. Over here, I added a couple of trees around this thing. And originally I had this piece here, which seemed like it was far enough away, but as you saw in the playthrough video yesterday, there was an enemy that got stuck on that. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this and move it back over here behind this thing where it shouldn't cause a problem. Could even take that completely out if we wanted to. All right, um, over here on this little island, I've added this sidekick door. This is from the Gameplay Toys drawer. Brave sidekick tree door. It's right next to the well. This is another tree that's out of the uh, plants drawer. It's right next to these other trees that we've placed around here. And you can kind of see how I've placed these. The exact trees don't really matter and the bushes that I'm using don't really matter. Just adding some detail around that, that's kind of nice. Same thing over here. Just adding some of these trees around there. And the enemies don't seem to get caught on those, so that's okay. All right, so we had our set piece that we put in out of the set pieces drawer. This is for the stone gate. Right behind that, we have the stone circle, and I put that right here, like you see, right behind that gate. 
And then I added some additional plants and bushes around the perimeter of this. This is one of the customizable pieces from the plant drawer, which I'll style in a minute just for some extra variety. That's the first piece out of the plant drawer. Another Fantasy Terrain 3. Another one of these. Another one of those. Note the orientation of the flower there. The purple flower. Another aspen. Another sidekick door. More of these little yellow flowers all around the perimeter of this thing. Just for decoration. And again, if you don't get those exactly as you have mine, it's not that big a deal. It's just scenery. But you can pause the video along the way. I tried to give you a good look at each of these little areas. So you can pause the video and try to orient your trees and place them the way that I want or the way that I have mine, because um, I know some of you like to duplicate what I have precisely. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and style all of the trees to be the Dunbrock theme. And that's the Dunbrock foliage. I'm going to theme all. And there we go. That just looks really, really good. Now, one last thing I want to point out before I close the, uh, the video here and wrap it up for the day. As you're in this toy box, you'll notice there's really not any place to hide Creativa toys. Normally we move them below the terrain, but depending on where you're standing in this toy box, you can see underneath the terrain in every direction. <laughs> so under the terrain is not necessarily a good hiding place for anything in this toy box, because you've got all these little floating footpaths that aren't very wide, and even these islands, um, there's not... Uh, they're not that big, and you can see stuff that's, that you hide underneath them. So we need a place to hide Creativa toys. So what we're going to do is all of these blocks that we've placed under here, that we placed earlier, I'm going to pick that one up, for example, and we're going to use this piece here instead. And I'll bring this up to ground level. And what this does is create a little pocket inside this island where we can hide some creativa toys and they won't be visible from anyone up on top of this terrain no matter where they're standing. We're going to do the same thing with this piece over here. I'll pick that up, scroll over to the left, and we'll use this same terrain theme here, or this same terrain piece there. That creates a nice little pocket here on the big island, the starting island, for some creativa toys. And then, you might have guessed it, that's why we also have this large island out here. <laughs> this is going to be a hiding place for creativa toys as well. So we'll replace that piece with the same small and thin terrain block, and so you can hide some terrain toys underneath this island, and they're not visible. You can also hide a few up inside the middle of this castle if you want. So that gives us places to hide the Creativa toys when we're all done. And with that, the build exercise for this toy box is done, and we are ready for our first economy tutorial, which will air next Friday. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video, or at least found the tower defense design tips to be helpful. If so, please give this video a like and leave a comment to let me know. This was my first tower defense map in Disney Infinity, and I've had a lot of fun designing it <laughs> and playing it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel before you go so you don't miss the tutorials for this tower defense game. That's all for me today. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.